Okay, now we're going to talk about quadratic functions specifically. Alright, so here's the definition. Alright, so let A, B, and C be... Now, see this little funky looking E type thing? That's the symbol for element of. And this weird looking R is the symbol for um, the real number system. All real numbers. So what we're saying here is let A, B, and C be elements of the real number system, or just simply let A, B, and C be real numbers. So that's what the notation means in case you run into it somewhere down the road, that these things are elements of this set over here, and this is just the symbol for the set of real numbers. Alright, so let A, B, and C be real numbers with A not 0, so we have to throw a 0 out for that one. Then a function of the form P of X equals AX squared plus BX plus C uh, is called a quadratic function. So make note that the uh, when you have x squared running around there, your highest exponent's a 2. Uh, it's a polynomial function, highest exponent's a 2, then it's called a quadratic function. Make note that the graph of every quadratic function is a parabola. Everybody know what a parabola looks like? All right, well then let's refresh our memories. All right, so parabolas have, the base, have this basic shape. Some of them can open up, which is what we'd say over here. This one opens up. And over here on the right, we'd say this one opens down. Okay, that's uh, the way it's it's opens up or down is determined by a. So back over here, if a is positive, then it opens up, and if a is negative, it opens down. We'll generalize that up here in just a minute. All right, so back to the graph. They each have a little point, right? One right there and one right there. For the parabolas that open up, it's the lowest point on the graph, and parabolas that open down, it's the highest point on the graph. That point is called the vertex. Important to know the terminology. Okay, so that's the vertex, and it is an ordered pair. We'll get to that in a moment. All right. In addition, we have every parabola has this um, imaginary line that runs down the middle here, like such. So this imaginary vertical line, I'm dashing it just to make note that it's it's imaginary. It's not part of the graph. Every parabola that opens up or opens down, there's this vertical line that runs right through the vertex. This line, this vertical line, is called the axis of symmetry. And that's because it right this cuts right in the middle, so if you folded the graph along that axis of symmetry, the left side would fall on top of the right side. So that's how it gets its fancy name, axis of symmetry. All right, so there's the t terminology of parabolas that we need to, uh, to understand. So let's move on to the following. All right, so everybody remember the graph of f of x equals x squared. That was a parabola. Uh, where the, uh, the uh, sketch the graph real quick. That was a parabola where the vertex was on was at the origin. Everybody remember that? One of our six basic functions. If you haven't seen that video, get over there and see that other video. All right, so the vertex for this is zero zero. It's the origin. The axis of symmetry, and I'm just going to abbreviate it A of S, is what? Well, it's a vertical line that goes right through the vertex. So that would be the y-axis in this case. Well, what's the equation of the, uh, the y-axis? Well, it's x equals 0. And you must put x equals 0 because uh, the axis of symmetry is the equation of a line. And if you just put 0, well, what the hell is that? So make sure you put the equation of the line x equals 0. Now, let me ask you what g of x would be. And we're going to recall some older knowledge. x minus 3 squared plus 2. So recall from uh, our translations what did this minus 3, this x minus 3, inside our original function here, f, what did that do to our original graph of f? 
Everybody remember? It shifts our graph. Which way? To the right, three units. All right. So remember, remember that. If you haven't seen that video, you need to get over there and see that right right away. Um, the x minus three is shifting f of x equals x squared, shifting all the points three units to the right. This little plus two that's outside here, that's going to shift our graph up two units. Everybody recall that? Okay. So then now, what's the vertex? All right. Well, if 0, 0 has been shifted over 3 units, 1, 2, 3, and then up 2 units, well, that would be the ordered pair 3, comma 2. All right, so then the axis, as soon as we have that, we can figure out what the axis of symmetry would be. And it's always, for parabolas that open up or down, it's always x equals the x part of your vertex, 3. So everybody see that translating right, left, and up and down? Because that actually leads us to what's referred to as the standard form of a quadratic function. We like this form right here. f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Again, a cannot be 0. The parabola opens up if a is positive, if a is greater than 0. And the parabola opens down if a is less than 0. Again, now if we're in this particular form, x minus h squared plus k, then the vertex of our parabola will be able to read it right off the function. It's h comma k. And as soon as we have the vertex, we automatically know the axis of symmetry, x equals h. Okay, does everybody see why the vertex is h comma k? Because the h inside here is moving us right or left, depending on if h is positive or negative. And k is moving us up or down, depending on whether it's positive or negative. Right, so that vertex 0, 0 on our f of x equals x squared graph is just being moved h units uh, right or left and k units up or down. Once we figure out what that is, then that's our vertex. Everybody with me? All right, let's look at an example. All right, f of x equals negative 2 times x minus 5 squared minus 1. First off, we need to recognize that it is a quadratic function because you got x minus 5 squared there. All right, and then with this negative 2 out in front, we know that this thing's going to open down. Now, what about the vertex? Since we're in our nice little standard form, you say, all right, well, the vertex is, what do you think? So it's five units to the right, so that would be five, and then one unit down. So the vertex is five comma negative one. Everybody see that? It's not a negative 5, it's a positive 5, right? Because this minus 5 here is shifting our graph 5 units to the right. All right, and once we know the vertex, we automatically know the axis of symmetry, which is x equals the x part of the vertex, x equals 5. Okay, so what about g of x down here? Well, a out in front here is a positive 1, so this is going to open up. All right, so the vertex. All right, so which way is this parabola shifting? Well, this x plus 2 is shifting us two units to the left. All right, so it's going to be a negative 2. And then the plus 3 is shifting us three units up. So the vertex is negative 2, positive 3. But I see that I know it looks like this should be shifting at two units to the right, but it's not. Don't forget. Our standard form here says x minus h, and so x plus 2 is the same thing as x minus a negative 2, and so your h is the negative 2. That would be the x part of the vertex. As soon as you know the vertex, you know the axis of symmetry, which is x equals the x part of the vertex, which is negative 2. All right, so that's great if our functions are already in standard form. There's a little more work involved if our function is not already written in standard form, uh, but we will discuss that in the, next, in the next video. So we definitely like this little form because information is just uh, coming off the page at us without us doing anything but looking at the function. So our goal is, is to uh, look at a function and determine what information we can gather, as much information as we can gather off of that function and get all that down first, and then move on to graphing or doing whatever else that we need to do with it. All right, all right so check out the next video, study well, and please let me know if you have any other questions.